Good morning. How everybody is? I is fine. Good. Welcome you this morning to the Vineyard. Hopefully you've come ready to worship the Lord. The songs, as always, are on the screen behind us. Uh, I hope you'll take this opportunity to fully engage and uh, praise our Lord. Let's go ahead and uh, invite His presence. Lord, we do thank you. We thank you so much for this day and this opportunity, Lord, to come before you. I pray, Father, that you would raise the level of expectation of what we might encounter. Lord, we did not come to worship a God of imagination, the God of our minds, Lord, the God of this world. We come, Lord, to worship the God of gods, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And God, I know that your word says where your people will worship and gather, Lord, you are going to come and you're going to be in our presence. And God, I pray that whatever our longing, uh, Lord, is today, God, whatever our needs are, we will find them completely in this moment with you. Lord, would you come and engage us here and those at home joining us. Would you engage us all, Lord, in genuine worship. Let our spirit connect with yours today. Your kingdom come, Father, and your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. You may stand if you'd like. <laughs>
lay my burdens down. My yoke is easy now. What a friend I found in you. I lay my burdens down. My yoke is easy now. What a friend I
Lord, we love you more than anything, and uh, Lord, what a wonderful thing to be able to gather freely in this place, to be able to express, Lord, our love and our gratitude and just our thankfulness, Lord, for who you are and all that you've done. And Father, I suppose if we stacked together all the worship that has uh, taken place from the foundations of the church, the foundation of Israel, Lord, if we stacked all that together, it would still fall so incredibly short of the worship and praise you were due. God, we love you, and we're just actually adding our voices to those saints who've gone before us, Lord. There's just none like you. And God, we love you. We love you, Father, and we bless you. In Jesus' name, church, we pray. Amen. Why don't you praise for me? All right, if you'd like, you can go ahead and be seated, or you can stand and dance, don't worry. <laughs> All right, well, um, I want to welcome you again to the uh, vineyard, welcome as well to our uh, family and friends who are joining us online. If we haven't had the opportunity to meet yet, my name is Denny, and I'm uh, one of the pastors on staff here with the vineyard, and I'm glad you chosen to worship with us today. A couple of really quick announcements. First, let's go ahead and dismiss the children, ages 5 through the 5th grade, and their teachers to their classrooms. It will be a small class today, but that's okay. All right. Uh, as they're making their way out, uh, just again, a few more quick announcements. First, if you feel led to give an offering today, remember you can do that by placing it in any of the gray drop boxes located by each of the sanctuary doors. You can give by going to our website, by using our smartphone app, or you can mail that offering in. With all that said, if you happen to be a guest with us today, uh, please don't feel the need to give financially. You are our guest, and we're really glad that you're with us. Uh, next, we have a financial peace seminar uh, starting on January the 20th. This time around, it will be through Zoom meetings, so it's all done from your smartphone or uh, from your computer. And let me tell you, this is a life-changing seminar. Uh, it runs for several weeks. How many weeks, Daniel? Erica? Nine. Nine weeks. Uh, and I'm telling you, this, this conference, this seminar, can radically change your finances, radically change how you, you see your finances, and can really set you free from the bondage of uh, unnecessary debt. And so I really want to encourage you to sign up today out in the entryway. Or, if you'd like to know a little bit more about it, you can uh, ask Daniel and or Erica. Their phone number is in the bulletin. That bulletin, even though we only have a few out there in paper form, can also be found on our smartphone app. So you can give them a call and they'll give you the rest of the information. All right, at this time, would you please welcome with me Pastor Cindy Taylor. You all know I'd be fine standing off to the side, right? Okay. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Cindy. I'm the missions and outreach pastor here at, the, at MCV, and I'd like to welcome you to 2021. Woo. Happy New Year. If you are a guest with us today, we are delighted that you've joined us. And whether you are here in person or online, if you would introduce yourself in the entryway if we don't know each other well, uh, or even in the chat on the, uh, on the app, I would enjoy the opportunity to get to know you. Today we're going to look at a passage from the book of Philippians. The Apostle Paul, who wrote much of the New Testament, is the author of this book. In Acts 16, 9, Paul saw a vision from a man from Macedonia who was pleading for help. The next, very next day, Paul and his friends got ready and left for Macedonia because Paul was an obedient servant of God. They set out to preach the gospel there. When they arrived in Philippi, um, they started meeting with people, sharing the gospel. People were receptive, and that's how the church at Philippi began and how Paul became its leader. At the time of this writing, though, Paul was imprisoned in Rome. He is writing to the church at Philippi because they sent a financial gift as well as supplies to sustain Paul while he was in prison. 
and he's writing to thank them for their generosity and to remind them of his great love for them. He's also giving them direction because the climate in Philippi was very tense. The city was an epicenter of cultural activity, and at this point in history, the church was experiencing division. Cultural practices influence believers. Political, racial stress, ethnic conflicts, economic pressures crept into the church. Paul addresses these issues gently and then leads the Philippians back to their first love. He leads the church home and reminds them of the calling on their lives. He begins by thanking the church, and then he reminds them of his love for them, but always ready to preach the gospel. In Philippians 2, Paul gives a passionate and precise summary of the deity of Christ. He also reminds them of the purpose of the church. Now he is ready to address the issues that the church is facing. So if you would, please turn with me to Philippians 3, 12 to 14, and I believe it will be on the screen behind me as well. If you would like a Bible of your own, there are some here off to the sides. And if you would like one online, the version is, I think, linked to our app if you would like a Bible uh, of your own on your phone or on your computer device. Not that I have already obtained, obtained all of this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold for, of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Would you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word and we thank you for the direction that you give the church. We thank you for the passion that you give the church and our forgiveness, our salvation, and our place with you in the kingdom. Lord, I ask that we would just breathe in your spirit now and that your spirit would guide us. Regardless of what's said here today, Lord, it's all about you. And it's all about your kingdom. Let your kingdom come in this moment. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Because I know this is going to roll off and go on down here, I'm just going to set this down. You all know me. It's what's going to happen, we know. Friends, as I read this passage of Scripture, I believe so much of what the Philippian church experienced, we are experiencing in our church today. We really are experiencing the exact same issues in our world today. The direction Paul gives is applicable to all of us. We would be wise in 2021 to consider Paul's advice to the church. The first piece of advice that Paul gives is to remember that Christ has taken hold of those who have put their faith in him. I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Some of us here have already come to that place of asking Jesus to be Lord and Savior. We've already established ourselves as believers. When we made that decision, we joined with the purpose Jesus gave the church and gave to his disciples. In Acts 1.8, it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. A transaction takes place. First, Jesus forgives the new follower and the Holy Spirit fills the believer Christ Jesus takes hold of our lives, and each of us in a very different way. Regardless of the differences where we start, it is apparent in our lives that changes are taking place. Actions that were once acceptable are no longer appealing. Habits are not as pleasurable. Joy fills the believer, and life changes. Christ lays hold of the people who choose to love and to receive his forgiveness. 
they make a choice to be part of the kingdom of God. Paul experienced salvation on the road to Damascus when Jesus called him from a blinding light. From that day forward, he was ready to preach the gospel wherever God had him go. His life definitely changed. He went from a man who persecuted Christians to preaching the message of Christ. But more changed the very things that Paul valued at his core, his job, his lineage, his citizenship, the very core of his identity, he declared to be filth compared to knowing Jesus and the surpassing knowledge of him. Now, if you haven't come to the place where you know Christ or you've asked him to be your Lord and Savior, I'm sure this seems crazy. It sounds like it's crazy. To the believer, we understand how this one encounter in Christ changes everything. It's a choice, and no one can make it for you, as much as we'd like to for those we love. I would love to start a conversation, if you have not come to that place, I would love to start a conversation with you personally about it. Drop a message in the chat or stop me afterwards, and let's have a conversation about it. Even though Paul's life changed drastically, Paul says he doesn't do everything perfectly. He defines perfect as becoming like Christ. I don't know about you, but I feel my imperfection. Do any of you just feel that imperfection where you're just not like Jesus? I feel the distance between me and that perfection of Christ. When I come upon that word perfect, I feel myself withdraw. Perfect. During the pandemic, I started playing, doing a crossword game. Anybody else pick up something like that during the pandemic? It's called Wordscape, Wordscapes. I don't know if anybody plays that or not. It's a game that can be set aside easily. You can be interrupted. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't take a lot of time to complete puzzles. You can do them quick. Occasionally, I'll come across the stump word, you know, where I just don't remember the meaning or I haven't used it in my daily life. And this last week, I was doing a puzzle with my granddaughter, and the word that she got stuck on, it was the last word in the puzzle. So frustrating to get to that last word, and you can't find it. The, last, the word was acme. Acme. And Leonard said, my husband, he said, um, isn't that an acronym for some kind of manufacturing? And I'm like, Ac acronyms aren't supposed to be in here. Let's look it up. So I look it up, and what's it mean? But the pinnacle of perfection. Huh? The pinnacle of perfection. The summit, the height of perfection. But when I hear the word acne, when I hear it, I can only think of Wile E. Coyote. <laughs> Uh, that's all I could come up with. Wiley e. Coyote constantly blew himself up in chasing the Roadrunner. And he blew himself up with Acme products. The fact that Acme means perfect made the cartoon even funnier to me. And man, would that, road run, would that coyote do anything to get that Roadrunner? It appears that Acme makes everything from iron bird seed to harpoons and anvils, and much of the, to the coyote chagrin, whatever device he ordered malfunctioned. It backfires and he gets either blown up or flattened. Truthfully, the malfunction did tend to be user error. But the coyote kept trying. He kept struggling and striving for his goal of that road runner dinner. For us, we need to remember what the chase is really about. It isn't about perfection, but knowing Christ, being like him. The second advice Paul gives is to forget what is behind and press on toward the goal to which Christ has called us. The forgetfulness in this passage refers to sin. 
We cannot focus on how we have sinned. We must live as a forgiven people. Now, guys, that's really important. Let me say that one more time. We cannot focus on how we have sinned once we've been forgiven. We must live as a forgiven people. Our interactions would drastically change if we could do this. Now, before I continue, I need to draw a big box here. Okay? When we're talking about a new year and forgetting, I am not telling you to forget the people you lost. I am not telling you to forget the love of those people. I am not asking you to forget the pain, the sickness, whatever loss you've had. What I'm asking you to do is to sit in the moment with Jesus and examine those painful and pungent moments. Examine them with him and take the time to take from those moments the things you need to carry into the future. Take what's important to move forward and carry those forward into the new year. Remember the love and the laughter. Remember the care. Remember the hope. Allow yourself to heal. Forgive others and allow yourself to be forgiven. Move forward. Receive forgiveness and let the attraction of sin, addiction, habits, and shame start to fade. Let joy and hope flood over you. From that point, remember why Christ came into your life You know, I love praying one thing for pastors, one thing for leaders, and that's that they would remember their first love. If they remember the day they came to Christ, if they remember the beautiful moment of knowing Jesus and what happened in that moment, it's a tremendous thing. It will put everything into perspective. Memories of how Christ has sustained us Those are the things we lean into. We press into it. We strain toward it. We might stumble, but we press on. We continue forward and we get back up. Finally, the third piece of advice Paul gives is to press on toward the prize, to win. I press toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. 2020 has had many distractions. We've had so much division. We've had worry and we've had illness. What if the church could agree that we would press toward the goal of heaven? Let's just do that. Now, I want you to please notice that in this little passage, Paul does not address the church and tell them to fix the government. In this church with similar problems is what we're facing now. He doesn't tell them to become more inclusive. He addresses the heart of the people. He addresses the nature of Christ living in the church. Once we get that right, the rest will happen. That's where we need to be. My goal is this image in heaven. Revelation 7, 9 through 12. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders, And the four living creatures, they fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God. (coughs) Excuse me. Saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Let's read that part again. You join me. Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power 
and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. There's power in that. Does anyone else want to see that with their own eyes? Boy, I sure do. I will look like that coyote running for that roadrunner dinner. <coughs> Let's pray for it. Let's press on toward the goal of seeing every nation in heaven. All of our families. All of our loved ones. Every last one. Friends, we don't do this perfectly, but we must press on. We might not have had the best 2020, and I reminded myself that in this world, this is as close to hell as I intend to get. Let's lift up our heads, and let's have an incredible 2021. Now, every short-term mission that we send out from the church, I have a tendency to go to them and thank them for being my guinea pigs. We are always trying to do our best to press on, but it never goes perfectly. Never. The first team we sent out didn't go perfectly either. None of them ever do. They almost missed a flight right away. They weren't out, even out of the United States yet. They were headed to Central Asia, but some of their luggage went to Poland. This small team wasn't greeted at the airport when they landed. Our missionary friends had slept through the alarm. So they're in this airport in Central Asia in the middle of the night because you're not allowed to land when you can see it. People with machine guns are walking around and they have no idea of where to go. What a start. Our team was there to put on a roof on a coal bin and to deliver coal to people who would freeze if they didn't get the coal for heat. The team worked very hard. And I can't even tell you everything they faced on that trip, but they fell in love with the people there. The missionaries who are working in the country have come home, so I can show you these pictures now. A different team is there. And Central Asia has changed a lot. The little village they visited suffered many changes too. The coal bin became a church. About 120 people started attending church there, according to what we were told. Believers in the village only started out with a few. There may have been one or two families. As time passed, people did return to their old ways. Leaders died, tragedy happened. The current missionaries who are there now visited last summer. They're centered in a large city farther away from this little village instead of in a rural area. They had no idea of this trip all those years ago. We talked to them about how special this area was to us, and we shared our love for these people. At Christmas, just a couple of weeks ago, I got a Christmas card from the missionaries. They said, we found it. We found the village that you told us about. We went there. We took about $2,000 and shared with the widows and orphans in that small village so that they would have something where they would have nothing over the winter. Folks, we don't even support these missionaries $2,000 a year. How cool is that? I tell you, tears fell on the Taylor house when I read that. It strikes you in the heart that all those years ago we went and tried to do something, and God is still multiplying our efforts. He's still out blessing us, out giving us, and out shining us with the gospel. Because it has nothing to do with us, but it has everything to do with him. We just do it and do it the best we can. I look forward to worshiping with those believers from that little town, that little village, around the throne of God. I think they'll be there. Maybe at this point, you just want Jesus to lay hold of you 
You want him just to reach out and grab you. It'd be so much easier than just having to make a decision. If you decided that you're no longer going to be a victim of sin and you're ready to put it behind, this is the day. This is the day to overcome it. Please come up and let us pray for you. You can have that transaction straight from your seat or if you're at home online. You know, Jesus met me outside a boy's locker room. I'm sure wherever you are, he can find you. But if you would like somebody to pray with you, if you would like somebody to talk to you about what this means, then let us know. Because we don't know if you don't tell us. Let us know. Now, at this point, I'd just like you all to stand up for just a minute and let's pray. Worship team can come back up if you all want. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for what you're doing in this world. And we thank you that in the midst of our imperfection, you are perfect. In the midst of us just doing the best we can, Lord, you make up for what we lack. I ask now that your spirit would move among my brothers and sisters, that your power would come to them, that if somebody here wants to know Jesus as the Lord and Savior, if they want to receive you, that you would tug on their hearts and let them know. If they're online or if they're, if they're in here, wherever, whatever time they're listening to this, meet them where they are. Lord, I ask that you would direct us now. Thank you, Father. Amen. Friends, my, um, as I've been praying for this message, one of the things I felt was that some of you may want to come up and pray because you need focus. You need perspective on what God's doing in your life. And this is the time to pray about it. Some of you are just asking how. How am I supposed to get that done? That's a good question. I think God knows. Let's ask. And then finally, I encourage you all to leave clean. Lay those things down that you don't need to carry anymore. Be done with it. And walk forward into a new year without the burden of all those things. If you have any reason that you'd like to pray, I invite you to come on up and let us pray with you. Amen.